Good afternoon, welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Amber Lovell. Today's headlines are... Recycling row in Winchester. Why is our glass being thrown away? Winchester's Christmas spirit is illuminated. And the Winchester Rays make a splash for cash. But first, tomorrow, Chancellor Philip Hammond will be delivering his autumn budget. The budget is expected to be positive for young people. Ian Sheridan helps us balance out the books. One of the biggest issues for students here on campus is that of tuition fees, which has become an increasing burden. Over the past 10 years, tuition fees have increased from £3,000 to 9250 The view of expert commentators is that the Chancellor is expected to freeze tuition fees, at least for the next school year. Building of new houses is projected to increase to 300,000 homes a year, including a significant proportion of affordable housing. This is up from 217,350 last year. The tax you pay when buying property known as stamp duty, is expected to be cut. This tax comes into effect on properties valued over £125,000, with increasing tax rates on increasing property value brackets. Further expectations are that the personal tax allowance will be increased from £11,500 to £12,500, which means any earnings below £12,500 will be income tax free. Single-use plastic items are expected to be taxed, in a move which will please environmentalists. This is aimed to help prevent pollution, especially in oceans. Another expectation in the budget is an anticipated change in regulation of driverless vehicles. The Chancellor said that he expects fully driverless cars without a safety attendant on board in use by 2021. This should benefit Winchester's well-documented parking problems. Ian Sheridan, Winchester News Online. Residents in Winchester have started a petition to improve the recycling rates in the area and to get glass collected from the curbside. Andrea Carlson has more. Winchester is one of the few city councils in Hampshire that doesn't collect glass with the rest of the recycling. Some Winchester residents think the current system is not good enough and want to change it to something that is more convenient. For all residents of the, of the city and the district where this is, this is an issue, possibly our students you know, fewer students have, have cars, have the means to transport their, their glass, so they probably do perhaps um, uh, are affected probably slightly more adversely. Um, but equally, a number of residents, you know, also don't have access to, you know, private cars, so they're also using public transport to try and recycle. Um, so, yeah, it, the, whole, the whole district would benefit us, our students, um, local residents, our staff that live in the district, yeah, everyone could benefit from the collection. When I'll talk to local residents, and data we collected showed that as many as 71% thought curbside collection was a good idea, 11% were indifferent, and 18% thought it was a bad idea. Well, most residents seem enthusiastic about the idea. Concern has been raised that it will cost a lot of money and it might not even work. Some residents say they are very happy with the system that is in place right now. But with 513 signatures already on and two months left to sign, one can assume the number will rise a bit more of people willing to switch out the current system. Andrea Carlson, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Over 8,000 members of the Winchester community gathered once more to celebrate the start of the festive season at the annual Christmas light switch on. James Poindestra brings Winnell into the light. With the winter season fast approaching, Winchester's Christmas light switch on was only just the beginning to the festive holiday. Live music, dancing and a surprise visit from Santa, Christmas spirits were lifted not only for the children, but for the adults as well. With over 10,000 people interested, the city held the switch on at the Broadway for the second year running. Attracting a range of people from students to those who have come from across the country 
It allows local businesses and charities to promote their works. There are a couple of events throughout the year where you really sort of see the whole city actually sort of coming together over one um, event. Um, there's no sort of different demographic sort of across the, the city, but sort of which is people from the uni, sort of people who've been living here, and sort of people who've moved here later in life. Um, and yeah, it, it seems to be the thing that everyone can sort of get behind. And then extended families and things come along as well, so it's actually a bigger audience here than just the community. I think it brings more people to Winchester and makes them more aware of Winchester and, and everything that's got them and how exciting it is. It's quite unique that it has like the Christmas lights, Christmas park going on, it's a really massive tourist attraction, so it brings a lot of business in, you know, it makes our business busier, but it's a lot of business, businesses over Christmas yeah. busier by having the lights and everything in the market. We've been here before, it's been really, really grateful to be and it allowed us to actually have a store for free. And the charity will trust, you know, any help, any publicity we can get, we are really grateful for. And it's lovely to be, you know, a bit outside of our walls, you know, engaged uh, in the streets. ...is located at the top of Winchester High Street and their travel expo... Art Radio's Rich Clark hosted this special occasion and a special guest appearance from Winchester's very own Kevin Collick. The community have once again come together to enjoy the city's tradition. As you can see, Winchester's Christmas lights are an amazing sight. The festive season has well and truly started. James Pointer, Winchester News and Live. These pies really are delicious. Now to Danielle Condell in the newsroom with news from around Hampshire. What's going on, Danny? Thank you, Danny. Thanks, Amber, and thanks for the mince pie. Well, wow. in Eastleigh are being hit with 14 months of traffic disruption. Roads have been closed and diversions and traffic lights are in place as Scottish and Southern Electricity Networks lay new underground cables in the area. The company's project manager, Tyrone Cowley, told Winnell, as with any project which involves work in the public highways, there will be an element of unavoidable disruption. However, I'd like to assure the local community and commuters that we have worked with the local council to keep this to a minimum and thank everyone in advance for their patience as we go about our essential work. Southampton has been one of the few cities across the UK which has installed new concrete bollards. Civic chiefs allocated the bollards in the Guildhall Square and on above Bar Street to prevent possible terror attacks caused by vehicles driving into crowded places. Southampton City Council told Winnell the bollards ensures the safety of residents and visitors attending the forthcoming events in the city. Events such as Oktoberfest, the Remembrance Sunday Ceremony at the Cenotaph and the Southampton Christmas Festival were amongst the events which the council provided extra security measures for. The precautions were a proactive step in response to a tragic terrorist attack across Europe last year. The council have been working closely with Hampshire Police to avoid disruption and plan to investigate long-term solutions for the future of Southampton and its safety. Several train lines are due to close over the Christmas period as engineering works are set to take place in Hampshire. South Western Railway passengers are being warned to plan their journeys ahead of the holiday. Some of the lines disrupted include those to and from London, Bournemouth and Weymouth. Rail replacement buses will be available. This is planned to take place from Christmas Eve to New Year's Day. Thank you, Danny. That's all from me. Back to you, Amber. Thanks, Danny. For many, public places are easy to access, but for those with autism, simple activities can be challenging. A Southampton library has launched a new initiative to make libraries a more welcoming place. Paige Lampard reports. We consider visiting the library a peaceful experience, but for those on the autism spectrum, this simple task can be fraught with many challenges. According to Askell, more than 9 in 10 people with autism would use their library more if autism-friendly adjustments were made. This includes Winchester University student Rodri Mayer, who has Asperger's syndrome. If I can avoid going to the library, I will. Um, I find it's often easier just to see what I can get from the internet. Um, if I need to get a book, I'll go in, I'll check it out, and I'll go back home and I'll do it. Because um, I find often going to the library is more trouble than it's worth for me and many other autistic people. Implementations have been made in libraries across Southampton to provide a welcoming experience for those with autism. What we, what we looked at doing is putting our staff through some training that was available um, from the national bodies um, and just raising awareness because I think we are aware that, as I say, people coming in and use our libraries 
and we are possibly more tolerant of children when they come in who might sort of act in a different way, what well, determine a different way, or who are a little bit loud, who don't or who don't sort of adhere to the normal sort of conventions then. Dimensions, a charity for learning disabilities and autism, told Winnell, our research found that people with autism are more likely to visit the library, but 40% still never do. We can ignore these figures and develop training and resources for libraries to become more autism friendly. We're now working hard to encourage libraries to make the adjustments and welcome guests with sensory sensitivities. With the changes made in Southampton, it is possible that more Hampshire libraries will follow suit to become more autism friendly. Paige Lampard, Winchester News Online. Swimming can be a leisure act leisurely activity for some, but over the weekend the university swim team, the Winchester Rays, set themselves a challenge to raise money for a good cause. Danielle Condell dives into the action. Just keep swimming. This is the advice the Winchester Rays gave to each other on Saturday. The team took to the water to raise money for the Stroke Association with their Stroke for Stroke event. So we set the target of a thousand pounds because last year we raised 1,150. So we were aiming to kind of get close to that if not try and beat it. So I think at the moment we're on eight, 857, which is an amazing. And obviously we want to try and get to at least 1,000 pounds. Like that, that's our target. Um, I know we'll get there. I mean, we've, we're almost there. It's just that final push now. We'll, we'll raise it, definitely. The team collectively attempted to swim the length of the English Channel. This equals 1,340 lengths of a normal 25 metre pool. They reached this target, so decided to swim back, meaning over 2,000 lengths were swum, and their fundraising target of £1,000 has now been reached. So, um, what's great is that as a team, we can collectively do this together, and it brings, uh, we have two sides of the team. The Winchester Rays have doubled their target, managing to swim the length of the English Channel and back, while raising money for a good cause. This is Daniel Condell, Winchester News Online. If the swimming was enough to whet your appetite, Johnny Leck is kicking off the sports. Over to you, Johnny. Thanks, Amber. Well, after a 3-0 thrashing at Anfield on the weekend, Southampton boss Mauricio Pellegrino and his side are facing some serious pressure from the media and their fans this week. The Daily Echo have said online that Saints lost with barely a whimper, whilst one of the national papers is claiming that Southampton boss Mauricio Pellegrino is fighting to save his job after just five months in charge. Now, after just three wins and four draws from 12 matches, Saints find themselves just four points off the relegation zone in 14th place, which is three places lower in the league than this stage last year. And uh, Saints forward Nathan Redmond says they've got the chance to put things right next week at home to Everton. And whilst that is certainly the case, this weekend's defeat does nothing to help take the pressure off a side who still have to play five of the top six before the turn of this year. Now to more local football and Winchester City's, um, uh, Winchester City's Adam Tomaso served the first match of his four game suspension this weekend as the citizens drew one all away to Yates Town on Saturday. The defender received the ban against Bishop's uh, Cleve last weekend after retaliating to a challenge from Cleve's Jack Watts, uh, which was described by Winchester bosses Craig Davis as a horrific tackle. Winchester City currently sit 10th in the table after 15 games and Thomaso will miss matches against Swindon, Supermarine, Bedford, uh, Biddeford and North Lee uh, returning to selection in December. And now the Basingstoke Bison stampeded over the London Raiders in a triumphant 6-0 victory. The result season maintaining their 100% win re uh, record in the league this season. Sunday saw the Basingstoke Bison return to home ice. The herd appeared the more dominant side, and it took them just under half of the first period to score. Soon after, they added a second, this time on the power play.
Going into the second period, the home side continued their form, adding a pair of goals to their lead. The first coming from Roman Malinic. And the second came from Dan Davies. And then going into the third period, Bison added another two goals, seeding their 10th straight win in the league. The goals coming from Davies for a second of the match. And Grant Rounding also got on the score sheet. The herd are in fine form going into their next set of matches, but the players still feel that there is room for improvement. It's obviously, obviously a positive. Obviously, struggled a little bit in the cup so far, um, or in one of the cups. So uh, to, 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 to make sure that you're doing well in, in at least one of the competitions is always a good thing. Yeah, obviously as a team, you know, we, we, we I think we, we, we lost a little bit of our way in the second period, got a bit, a little bit maybe slack um, in some areas. So uh, if we can maintain our consistency throughout the whole game and, and play for 60 minutes and so we look to improve. That's all for sport this week. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. As the wider Winchester community begins to celebrate Christmas, the University of Winchester had a very special guest at their Christmas light switch on last night, and I've been dying to find out who it was. The city centre weren't the only ones lighting Santa's path to Winchester this year, with the terrace bar once again having a switch on of its own, filled with a Christmas atmosphere accompanied by carols and friends. some fun into any event that's happening so um, obviously as a university it's nice to get into the festive spirit so if you have any lights turning on you need Father Christmas, you need lots of people, you need some festive songs, you need different need snow because it makes Christmas. With around 140 students and staff attending the event we were wondering who the special guest would be to start the countdown. Winchester is certainly on the countdown to Christmas. Athena Lakey, Winchester News Online. The Christmas spirit isn't only on campus. Once again, Winchester is marketing itself as the Christmas capital of the UK. The market, now in its 11th year, opened yesterday and attracts thousands of people from across the country. Oh, we've heard the Winchester Christmas market is really famous and it's got wonderful things to look at. So you know, on a free day, it's a must see. So that's why we came, all of us, friends together. We love it. It's really good and it's authentic. It's got all the things you can think of about Christmas. It, it's just making us now wait for Christmas. Uh, well, I like this Christmas market because it seems like good quality things that the stalls are selling. I think some of them you get a lot of plastic things and the sort of cheap goods, but these, these are nice things and it's a nice Christmassy atmosphere. It gets you in the mood for Christmas, so that's what we like. <laughs> Second day now. Um, yeah, really well. Quite a quiet Monday, but I think um, some people like to come round and have a, have a quiet day shopping before the mad rush comes in and we're expecting some coaches soon as well, so... That'll be good, get everyone revved up for Christmas. Well, I'm certainly revved up for Christmas, but that's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching Winchester News Online.